In order to use the Backup and Migrate module, we need to install a couple of modules. The first is Backup and Migrate, which you can find at drupal.org slash project slash backup underscore migrate. And the second is optional, but recommended, and that is Token, which you can find at drupal.org slash project slash token. Once those are installed, we'll head over to the modules page and go to the other section and enable both Backup and Migrate and Token. All right, now let's configure Backup and Migrate. We'll go to Configuration, System, Backup and Migrate. And at the top of the screen, you'll see notice that tells us to specify a private file system. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. You can simply click this link or go to Configuration, Media, File System. And I'm going to set the private file system path to Sites, Default, Files, Private. And Drupal is configured to automatically deny access to this folder if it exists, so it's a safe location. You can, however, choose a directory outside of your Drupal installation if you'd prefer to do that. All right, I'll go ahead and save this, and we'll head back to the Backup and Migrate configuration page. And here we have the option to make our first quick backup by simply clicking Backup Now. Now, we don't have a lot of options right now, and we can only backup the default database to a download or a manual backup directory, and we can only use the default settings. I'm going to go ahead and click backup now just to show you what happens. And congratulations, if you're following along, you just made your first database backup. When we clicked the backup now button, a file was downloaded to our local machine with the file name backup and migrate 2013 02 28 t 10-03-49.mysql.gz. Now, if you're not familiar with timestamps, this might look a little funny, but it's actually pretty simple when you understand the parts of the name. The default naming structure is the site name, backup of migrate, followed by a timestamp. That's the long string of numbers. It's a MySQL file, hence the .mysql, with gzip compression, which adds the .gz at the end. Now, if this still doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. We'll discuss this more in the advanced backups subtab.